Bridget said, I am your no. ticket, your way out. Like, what? I said, what the hell? I said, y'all been doing this for a long no time. Long time, yep. Damn, damn, damn. <laughs> Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, whoa. <laughs> we oh, coming they in. They gave it to us tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we coming in with season one, The Kings of Napa. This is episode five, How Stella Got Her Pinot Bay Baby. Huh. <laughs> that last seven and a half minutes, though. Yeah, man. I want to say, two, two. I called it first. Hey, I yeah. called it first, episode, episode one. Episode one, yep. I said, I will trust it. Something ain't right, but we're going to get right on into it. So we start off the episode where we see August and she's sleeping. She has a nice, like the old people say, they her lingerie on. And we see this mysterious man just kind of creep, creep, creeping around the room, um, looking over her and all. And I'm like, what the hell is going on here? So we see that August wakes up. So apparently this was a dream that she was having. Or was, was she? Because when she woke up and she looked at the window, the curtains was doing a little fool -la, la So she ends up getting a phone call that really woke her out of her sleep because it's Grace. Grace is like, listen, you need to come back over here because Kristen don't buck that divide. <laughs> <laughs> so she gets over there and Grace was like, listen, we have all these grapes out here that are spoiled. So August was like, well, how much money do you think Think we have wasted here with these four grapes. I thought she was gonna say, you know, like a cool couple, couple hundred thousand. Nah, oh, half, half a million one. We just we gonna just say some millions because we don't have the dollar size right here. But she said, listen, I, I I know he's growing and I know he's trying to get his stuff right, but I, I'm gonna need you and your mama to humble yourselves. We need to get Bridget, Bridget back, back over here on yep. the vines. So August said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run it by my mama, see what she has to say. So she does that. She runs it by um, Vanessa, and Vanessa was like, you know what? I've been thinking about Bridget, you know, for a little bit now. Basically, she's come to terms that we need her. This kid ain't her fault. And whatever it is that you need to do to get her back here, I'm on board with it. I still don't like the way it's working, though. Me either, because it's almost like if you need me, then you can. Yeah, that's the only reason why they're getting Bridget. Yeah. She really don't want Bridget back, because I'm like, Absolutely. if you if, if you really wanted Bridget, you would have came to August before August came to you. We see that Bridget is over at the house with her mom, telling her mom, listen, these accommodations that you and Auntie Yvette got over here, they're not working. This small house cannot accommodate all three of us. Somebody got to find someone. And I said, hold on, Yvette's still there? Like, real fast. I ain't trying to be funny. But y'all have access to money. You can go stay in a room. Like, why are you crashing on your niece's couch? We see August and Vanessa come over there to Bridget's house to further let Bridget know, like, listen, I need you to come back. And Vanessa is here to vouch for the fact that I'm inviting you back and it's with her permission that you will be able to come back. Bridget called him out on that booze kit. She did. She called him out. I, I didn't actually think she was going to agree. I knew she was going to agree. I didn't think. I thought I thought she still was going to hold her guns. If you don't want me the first time. I don't want you to want me. The second time. <laughs> hey, hello. So over there at the house, right, we have a scene where we see Rose is really laying it on thick for Dana. And I'm saying to myself, isn't this the skit that Dana's supposed to be doing towards you or for you? Because the last time I checked, Dana was the a-hole towards you. Why are you having to cater to him? She has this nice spread out for him. Some, you know, some strawberries, the fruits. Every, the whole nine yards. Little, little, little sexy vibes going on. Nick said, we know Dana catches on real quick. He said, hold on, hold on. Let me, mm -mm. <laughs> I live in a house full of females. Uh -huh. I got mama and sister. What you got up your sleeve? What, what the hell's going on here? Because they've been having sex for seven days. It's been wonderful. All that good. I said, I can live without she had, doing she that. She had tending the rose gotten for seven days. Yeah, man. so she all happy and would not. <laughs> but we've heard her say that um, say before that they wanted to have a baby. Well, evidently they're having fertility issues. And she brings it up to Dana like, listen, I went to my to my lady parts doctor and she says she think it'll be a good idea if we go see the fertility specialist. Dana's whole face was like, mm. First of all, that's really a man thing. Like I've heard this time and time again, if men have to go and visit a fertility doctor, they automatically think that it's a strike <clears throat> against their manhood. And some women feel that way too. Like if they need assistance, it's a strike against their womanhood, which is not. It's just that some things are just not aligning with needing a little bit of help. I mean, it's almost like I being- I mean, hell, we want our ding ding to work, man. 
It's not that it doesn't work. It's almost like when you're at home nursing a cold, sometimes you need to go to the doctor and get an antibody to move that, that process along. That sound good. It it Because but it is right. Obviously, if you ain't popping out baby without assistance, something is wrong. Something is broke. Something ain't aligning. That's all. Yeah. But it, it don't matter. It do matter. Because <laughs> we're going to get into this. So, um... Eventually, we do see that Dana folds into it and he tells Rose like this, and you know, this is what I, I'm going to do. So, Auntie Yvette is at the house and she rolls up on Dana and he looks real concerned. Like, he got something on his mind and Yvette was like, you can talk to me. Like, tell me what's going on and whatnot. But they start having a dialogue about the little abortion fiasco that happened where Auntie Yvette opened her big mouth in front of Dana and let him hear that his mama wanted to abort him whatnot. So she's telling him, you know, you know, I'm sorry, my big mouth, I should have never said that back in my day or where I'm from, snitches get stitches. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> so she's still like, Dana, I can help you if you let me know what's going on with you. He turns the laptop around and he was like, Rose wants to have a baby, and then he starts to voice his concerns. And I was like, I knew this where we were going. I'm glad yeah. they're having this conversation because it's a real conversation yeah. to have. Yeah, yeah. Is that he's afraid that he's going to pass on his dwarfism gene to a baby. It's like it's 50% chance that I can give my child this gene, and I don't want my, this for my child. And Auntie Yvette was like, a uh, second Dana? <laughs> Hallelujah. The world ain't going to be able to handle that. But Dana's whole thing is, you don't know how it is to how, walk a right. mile in my shoes. Yeah, so it's suffering. easy it to say, you. you know, we'll have <clears throat> a Dana 2.0 walking around here. But if I could all, you know, have my child to be like other children, that's what I want. <laughs> Let's lean into Miss August. So Miss August is out there having a dinner date with her boo, Calvin. I there don't trust some, Calvin, man. Yeah, yeah there's Calvin, about, Calvin is sneaky. He he a little bit too smooth. Too smooth. Yeah. Came back at the right wrong time. He, like he give he give me young in the wrestling and <laughs> God and light vibe. That's what he give me. You know, they show all the perfect guys on there. Oh, then yeah. they turn around. I don't watch the stories, but, but I hear, you know, people who watch it talk and then they be these shit dudes and end up breaking these girls' heart. The storyline don't change. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I promise you I could probably pick up on the stories right now. And I ain't watched it in over 25 years. I could pick up <laughs> on the storyline in one episode. Um, We see, uh, like I said, see August and Calvin having dinner and whatnot. And the dinner was cut short because our telephone rings. Well... <clears throat> Mr. Otis is getting ready to wake up from his coma. And this is the time that everybody needs to question him and figure mm -hmm. out what in the yeah. mother buck you the is going brown. on. Well, they go over there to the hospital, right? Mr. Otis, yo. <laughs> He look, what they say on the color purple, he look mighty yeah, bad, he yeah, look yeah. mighty low. <laughs> but when he seen August, <laughs> he knew he needed to confess. So, I'm sitting there like, okay, so August was like, how could you? Like, she's going into, I know you did, did it, yeah. And he was like, I know, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I was, like, I, was like, I was like, you admitting that quick that you did it? I'm like, oh, so we weren't wrong. Like, she yeah. really did do it. She was like, my father loved you and you would extort us? He was like, like oh, 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 oh. Yeah. <laughs> Back that train up. He said, I won't do it nothing but stealing some grapes and bottling my own wine now. Don't get it yeah. twisted. I love your father, but he promised me he was, but he would take it too long. So pretty much I helped myself to some grapes, bottle, bottle, clap, clap. I sold said it to my family. I, I said he was selling a whole lot of wine that he was able to buy a boat. 50000 Yeah, and still had like, what, like almost, what, 80 grand in the bank? I think it was Yes, in the bank. He said, you weren't extorting my father? It's like, I love your father like a brother. I would never do nothing. I mean, your family is my family. No. So back at the house, we see that Christian is all in his light head because y'all know last episode, Christian found a bag with the stuff in it that kills the vines. So he eventually has this conversation with August and tells August what it is that he found. And August was like, absolutely not. Like, that can't be. Like, what's going on? And Christian was like, but she had a drill in the bag too, yo. 
the same thing that it takes to drill a hole through the vine mm -hmm. to, to um, poison the vine. Why would she have a drill in her bag along with this right here? So now they're all kind of thinking like, wait, wait. She was the one that came over here from over there at the other um, vineyard that she was working at to tell us that, that their is. stuff was poisoned. And now mm -hmm. all of a sudden, the stuff is... Is ending up in her bag. So now we're at a point now where we really have to vet out the fact that, okay, if it's Bridget, we're going to take her down. But we got to figure out if it's really her or not. So they called over to Quincy and told Quincy, listen, we need to put eyes on the situation. Find out everything that you need to find out to let us know whether or not she could possibly be <clears throat> in on this. So Christian was like, listen, we got to bring old Dana into this. We got to let him know. And Bridget, I mean, um, August was like, absolutely, absolutely you're freaking not. not. <laughs> like, he's already on my A about the oldest thing. You think I'm going to give him another, uh, give me another L? And he watched that? No, we got to figure this stuff out on our own. I but at the true. same time, that's what causing all the problems in the families that y'all want to keep all the pertinent information from each other. Yeah, that part. Yeah. Just work the freaking together. Yeah. <laughs> so, crazy enough, we didn't see the extortionist this entire episode. And Bridget was in. Never mind. Oh yeah. I didn't think, <laughs> oh, you got. Yeah, you bring up a good point. Yeah. So moving forward a little bit, when August and Vanessa went over there to Bridget's house to tell her they wanted her to come back to um, the Vine to get her job back and whatnot, Auntie Vanessa had invited her to go to New York with her. It's some kind of wide event that they have. It's a good networking thing. <clears throat> blah 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 blah. So we see them there, having a good time and whatnot. We look like Bridget don't have one too many glasses of wine. Mm -hmm. And Vanessa was like, you know what, while we're here, I want to share something with you. I want to take you somewhere and whatnot. So we see she ends up at a psych ward. And I'm like, whoa. This kind of makes sense because a few episodes ago when um, Bridget lost her job, did y'all remember, her mama had confronted Vanessa and told Vanessa, you have to give her her job back because you know that mental illness runs in our family. That's right. She sure did. She sure did. And she was like, if she goes into depression, you don't know where this will lead her. Yeah. So immediately I knew that that was her mother. That was Vanessa's mm. mom that they were going to see. Well, mama saw Vanessa and immediately went into, oh, your thighs are yeah. This, this. And I said, well, you don't want to see me. Yeah, yeah, just tell me how you really feel. I said, if Vanessa's thighs are fat, then I'm humongous. <laughs> I mean, come on, mama. So then she looks over there at Bridget, and she was like, Melody. Me I mean, she's It's going, all your fault. It's all your fault. You shouldn't be here. You. I mean, she's losing yeah. her freaking mind. And Bridget's like, yeah. Can I'm a bit in shock, tell man. Tell me what's going on here. Let me tell y'all a true story. But I've always told people I'm afraid of older people. When they get to that state right there, I'm kind of afraid of them. Because we had a family member that was in nursing home. I was going to call it assistant living, but no, this was nursing home. So we went to go visit my family member in the nursing home. And this older white lady just came from out of nowhere, just walking like she innocent as hell, and punched me dead in my stomach. Oh. <laughs> and ever since then, I've been afraid of older people. She <clears throat> walked out that Boom. Oh, darn. <laughs> and punched me dead in my stomach. I was like, oh, okay. You ain't hit them back? No, I didn't hit them back. <laughs> I would never admit to that. So I was like, Bridget, like, wait a minute. What the hell is going on here? Like, Cause, Yeah, because she showed up was, was trying to swing on them. Get this lady away from me. <clears throat> Long story short, we'll come to find out that I don't know whether to believe Vanessa or not. Because Vanessa has a tendency to put 20 on 10 to try to get you to do manipulate you into doing things that she wants you to do. So she's telling her like, listen, you the reason that she's acting like that towards you is because your mom is the reason that she's in here and the reason for my father's death. And she was like, what do you mean? Yeah. Like mean he died of a heart attack, right? She was like, no, no, no. Your mother was the wild child. She was the one who was out drinking, smoking, getting high all the time. She came home and she picked a fight with dad, screaming, hollering, yelling, and all of that and caused him to have an aneurysm. And he died. Mom went into a nervous <clears throat> breakdown and she has been in this state ever since. So Bridget is like, well, wait a God, no, minute. Yeah. This family just keeps on giving and giving with the secrets and yep. whatnot. This is a yak moment. Yeah. And when Vanessa was saying, I was like, BS. Ain't no way. 
that that girl was that bad enough to cause that much stress in y'all household for her daddy to have an aneurysm. It's it, the way the, the way that the mama was acting, because even though I understand she got a mental illness because she in that place, but how you gonna have a mental illness and soon I walk up on you, you talking like that all arrogant, like you better than me, and you in here. That's what they do. That, but but what I'm saying is you don't go too far away from who you are. So I think the mama was the one that gave the, the was stressing the daddy out and he had an aneurysm and took it and threw it off on Melanie. Now Melanie is all messed up because she thinks she killed her daddy. Hmm. Good point. Yeah, pushing it off on her. And guilt caused mama to have yeah. a nervous breakdown. Right. I said, yeah, they ain't on they ain't on Melanie. Man, you might- even, even though she <laughs> get on my nerves, that ain't on her. What she was a child. Say? What did they say? He's they ain't on passionate her. about that too. Yeah, yeah that's what they know <laughs> happening. Blame it, on, blame it on the child. She had nothing to do with that. Long story short, we can move forward a little bit. So, Dana now knows about the whole thing that's going down with the PI because the PI came back and told, um, told August and Christian, listen, well, did he tell Christian? Well, he definitely told August that, listen, what we came up with is that the extortionist has been doing this for a minute, as y'all mm-hmm. know, but um, the phone calls have been pinging off of a tower that's a few miles from Bridges House. For over a year, this is where the phone calls have been initiated from. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm like, you sure it ain't you, Quincy? <laughs> right. So now the only thing that it is left to do is y'all need to put some cameras over there in Bridget House because Bridget is in New York, so hey, we can go ahead and put the cameras over there in Bridget House. That's what August went ahead. Did you thought that was a bad idea when they first horrible, brought it up? Horrible, mm. horrible idea. Because even if you figure out that she is the person that did it, you've lost your sister for forever. Right. So, <clears throat> in return of August with these whole camera situation, she ended up, long story short, finding some cameras in her own dwelling. Mm-hmm. Because now she realizes that, okay, the same tactic that y'all are getting me to use on Bridget is being done used on me. On me. Yeah. So she confronts Dana about it and was like, listen, <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Like, I know that you got Quincy to put these cameras in my skit. And he was like, and? And I found out a lot of stuff. You you really don't trust Calvin. Like, you got him going there, down and down and around and around in the ringer. And you're stalking his wife. You're doing all this. <laughs> August said, because I have a father that cheated and a brother like you. Yep. I don't trust no man. I said, ooh, <laughs> So then, he was like, and I knew that you were trying to replace me as CFO. Now, I don't know if she was lying to get on his good side or not. And she said, oh, so you saw me going through the applications. All that, oh, yeah, I was trying to replace you. Because I wanted you to be my co so that we can take this empire by storm and I can give somebody else the, C- the CFO position. I don't, no, believe, I don't that. believe that. I, no. You were trying to get rid yeah, of Data. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't believe that at all. Data was like, I mean, I would have been trying to get rid of him. Data said, you pulling my chain, right? No, I wasn't. I said, I don't know about that one, August. <laughs> I think you were really trying to get rid of Like you said, why wouldn't you? Yeah. He's been giving you nothing. But right, he held. got a thorn in your side. Yeah, so. Oh, Lord have mercy. So now that we got this whole idea that it's Bridget, she's the extortionist, she's the one that's poisoning the vines, we have a flashback that August is having. Uh, because August has been acting really weird. Like, I said, is she pregnant? Has she slept with Calvin yet? Because she keeps holding her stomach and feeling ill and whatnot, but she's having panic attacks. So... She's having this flashback of when her and Bridget were younger and Bridget was painting this photo of her. And Bridget was telling her how if she needed to get back at someone, you wouldn't see it coming. Mm -hmm. It would pretty much be sneaky conniving and it would be little at a time, low and slow, and you ain't never seen this side of me. So now (laughs) August is like, like, (gasps) hold, 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 hold. Oh, maybe I don't crack the case, yeah. baby. Elizabeth, I'm coming to join you. I'm like, and Stella was like, so we just go go back all the way all back then and use that against her. What she said way back then. And yeah, you can't. I mean, but everybody has that in their nature to low and slow somebody that they really want to get back at. But you, don't remember, they? but you remember the Instagram post that you said you saw somebody say when you get cheated on, you wish you can go back and look at the first message and see where they tricked you. <laughs> So I want to go back to that first message to see how, how I got tricked. Yeah. <laughs> that 
That is so freaking true. So this whole episode, we see Auntie Yvette mm. trying to prove herself to Vanessa, right? Because she wants to move back in the house. She's sick of sleeping on the sofa. I said, Auntie Yvette, you supposed to have a multi-million dollar company. Mm -hmm. Why do you need to live here? Right. You can't get you a nice little brownstone condo with an elevator with a doorman. Like, you can't get be on your power boss mess. I know what the problem is. What's the problem? And I ain't judging her. Her credit is bad. <laughs> but when your credit is bad, that's why you put up a year's worth up front. Nah, she ain't fit to do that. <laughs> she ain't fit to do that. So, basically, Vanessa gave her the boom. If you can get the distributor deal that we've been needing... For this new dessert wine, maybe I'll consider letting you move back. You ain't had to tell a uh, G. Oh, yeah. A G like Yvette. Uh -huh. All you had to do was tell her that. Because we already knew what she was going to do. Yep. She was going to get that man, look it up. Put them babies up. Put them in that Sears Robux <laughs> bra. Had them joke serve it up. <laughs> and that's exactly what she did. She wooed the hell out of that man. Yes, yeah, she did. And whatever she did to him upstairs in that room wearing Vanessa's robe, don't got him turned all the way out where he talking about years of deals with this yep. chick. He was like, listen, I, he left about the house ain't even have his shoes up. I thought he was ready to say he wanted to marry her. Oh <laughs> my God, don't. Like that lady said, I, let, I ran out my house. I ain't even had no shoes on. <laughs> I said, wait a minute, dude. Dude was in there. You hear what I say? But she got the deal. And now she back at the house. <laughs> but I'm wondering if he really stringing her along. Because she done gave up the goods now. So he, so what? he have no What's the incentive. Contract? Yeah. She ain't got no contract. Nothing that sign. And she, yeah. So the deal ain't solidified yet. Yeah, that part. Yeah, man. Everybody's back from New York. We got Bridget back. Got Vanessa back. Vanessa comes downstairs and catches Auntie Yvette in the room. And she was like, hold on. So that's when she lets her know, like, listen, <laughs> I did what I had to do. I got it. The deal is sealed. Thank me later. Let me go on to my room. She was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Vanessa was like, is that, that my room? They wrote? Yes, it is. So then we see Bridget. Bridget is having a conversation <laughs> about there's some things that went on in New York. But she now is, is she's giving them enough, but not enough. We won't tell them what happened in New York because now she has the one up on the secrets mm -hmm. of New York and whatnot. So her and Rose decided that they wanted to go out dancing that night and whatnot. And I said, I told y'all, I've been freaking telling y'all <laughs> that something just ain't feel right. But before we even get to the end episode, because let's talk about Calvin. This was the... Um, title for tonight's episode, How Stella Got Her Pino Back. Calvin and August don't went out to their old high school and whatnot. He was a football player. She was a cheerleader and whatnot. Reminiscing on the old <clears throat> times and how Pino was his thing back in the day. And when they broke up, she couldn't even drink Pino no more because it always brought her back to the penis. But anyway, um, <laughs> so tonight was the night. Yeah. That she was going to sample a little Pinot in a penis. That tonight is the night that you make me your woman. I can't sing. No, yeah. You said. <clears throat> but uh, out there at the football field on them bleachers. Bleachers. Because <laughs> I was getting ready to say, I hope y'all bleached the bleachers. Bleachers, but it still is coming out bleachers. Uh. They don't got their groove on at the school on the bleachers with the light, the field lights on. Mm -hmm. And I say, y'all just glutton to have y'all skit blared out on somebody's Instagram. Hey, man, maybe we should go and get a bottle of Pinot. And go out there to the football And, and go to our old high school. I'm going to go to yours. <laughs> nah, we going to yours. No. No, 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 no. I got, I got, to yours. I got enough bodies out there. <laughs> hey, hey, you older than me, so we go to your school. I'm a year older than you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, don't do that. <laughs> He just act like I was like, like I'm over here milfing it. <laughs> Don't do that. Hey. Don't do that. I'm sorry. Uh-uh. I love it. Yeah. What they say, they say older the berry, sweeter the juice. We're not doing that tonight. Well, we ain't going out of that room. <laughs> Melody ends up having to go to the doctor, right? Because y'all remember last episode, she was having like <clears throat> these, like almost passing out spells. Yeah. Like she was getting hot and she was sweating and whatnot. So she goes to the doctor and now she's breaking out in rashes. Yeah. 
And you could see it all up and down her arm. And the nurses asking her all kinds of questions. It was like, have you traveled out of the country lately? And she was like, yeah, a couple of weeks ago, I'm a traveling nurse and whatnot. I said, is that a lie? I don't know. Because she did travel a lot. And yeah. Vanessa was like, you always from... Traveled a lot with Reggie. <laughs> she was nursing his. I'm ready to come. Yeah. <laughs> so, we saw that part and whatnot. And the nurse said, you know, I'm going to draw some blood and whatnot. Um, I'm sure everything will be fine. But she had that look of like, I've seen this before where it ain't good. But of course, you know, got to put on a brave face. Don't let the patient know that you really like... <laughs> mm. But... Now we're back over there at Bridget's house. Bridget and Rose don't came in from a night of dance, and they don't have a yeah. good time. There's Patron shots. There's more liquor being served up at Bridget's house, and they're talking. And Bridget was like, you know what? Can I trust you with a secret? And Rose was like, you know this. Like, yeah. sure, you can trust me with anything. <clears throat> and she went on to tell her that, hey, I've known Reggie has been my father for a very a long, long time. time. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. So now you're kind of solidifying your motive yeah. for maybe extorting yeah. your family. Yeah, yeah. At the start of that scene, I was like, this don't feel right. Don't feel right. <laughs> yeah, this all. don't feel right. <laughs> and the way Rose was looking at her, it was like, yeah. <clears throat> mind you, Christian had already asked Rose <laughs> a little before in the episode, listen, I'm having problems with my girl. You don't date girls mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. How do I fix this? And I said, okay, so now we, we, we building towards this Okay, she really does. She's either bi, you know, she's at least bisexual. So I like, okay, she, what's, what's the deal? She looks at Bridget better, better than, than she, she looks look at, at Dana. Dana. Yeah. Always have. Yep. So the next thing I know, they move in for a big old kiss. And they started passionately kissing each other. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Here we go. Whoa, there whoa, it is whoa, right whoa, there. Whoa. So then we saw Rose. And she was like, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. me and Dana are going to have a baby. We're going to have a baby. Bridget said, I am your, your ticket, your way out. Like, what? I said, what the hell? I said, y'all been doing this for a long, long time. long time, yep. Damn, damn, damn. <laughs> <laughs> said, cheating in the next room. Making plans <laughs> to be with my boo. <laughs> Ooh, next thing we know, we pan over. The guy doing cameras. Yep. We have forgot all about the cameras that was planted. And, and we see Dana. Dang. And he is watching his sister now. It's not his cousin no yeah. more. His sister and his wife. Yeah. Making out. But the bad part is he can't even say nothing because the cameras are not supposed to be there. So how do you wrap how, it up? How do you confront that? You can't. Because you're going to jail if you do. But then we see that Rose actually kind of clicked back in and realized that she couldn't do it. And she ran out the house. Oh, it was too late. But then. It, the, the damage is hey, been done. Hey, y'all done swapped saliva now, so they it's a done deal. They don't did more than swap that way. I didn't try to go. I didn't want to go that way, but yeah. They went that way. <laughs> yeah. They went there. And as much as I saw it coming, I didn't see it coming. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't see that coming. So y'all leave that in the comments. Who do y'all think is the story of the family? Like now it's just all over the place for me. Yeah, like now, yeah, who in the hell? Yeah. Yeah. Alright, if you enjoyed this review, be sure to go ahead and check out our power force review right here that we did on Sunday. And we're gonna catch y'all in the next review. But on that note, we're gonna leave y'all alone straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty south. To that. Holla boo.